You know, I wasn't raised in church. I knew nothing about church. I knew nothing about Jesus. Mm -hmm. And actually, the, re the way I got saved is I had a ranch down in Columbia, South America. Uh, I was in the import-export business uh, of all natural substances. <laughs> I was smuggling <laughs> cocaine in yeah. and um, found out that I was selling uh, coke to an undercover agent for several years. Um, they went to arrest a bunch of guys, and, and I ran. And I, I love to tell people that I ran from the long arms of the law to the strong arms of the Lord. And walked into church, and 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 this is this is one of people say, well, why do you keep doing this? Well, you know, David said, King David said, Lord, remind me of the pit from which I was dug, and and that's why we see so many people in our church saved. People say, how do you, you know? Like I, we were talking before last week, we had uh, uh, we had eighty six, eighty seven people saved. The week before that, we had ninety something people saved. Uh, it's not unusual to, for us to see 120 people saved on a week. People who aren't religious or people who aren't Christians, they feel, family feels comfortable inviting them to come to our church because they're never going to feel condemned. They're only going to feel motivated that God loves them. God loves them as they are. You know, I, I love to say this, that, that when I got saved, uh, Jesus invited me to a great party, and it was a come-as-you-are party. <laughs> and he didn't say, go get rid of your heroin. Right. You know, I was using eight, ten times a day. Go get rid of your cocaine. Go get rid of your heroin. Then come back. Jesus took me that day as I was. Now, I looked so bad. You know, I had hair down to here and earrings in before mm -hmm. earrings were, you know, this is 33 years ago, before earrings were cool and tattoos and no mm -hmm. shoes and no shirt. Unfortunately, nobody. In the, I came to the altar, but nobody in the church came up to pray with me. You know, <laughs> thank God, man may look on the outside, but right. God looks on the inside. Now that became my church, and 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 I got launched out of there. But th that's why we keep doing this. That's why we keep we keep doing it. Number one is God loves people. He doesn't love them if he doesn't love them uh, uh, after he loves us as we are. Mm -hmm. Took me as I was. And the second thing is, is not only does God love us as we are to get us to heaven, he wants to bring heaven down here to us. He wants to change our lives. He wants to make our lives better. And so it's, it's the greatest thing in the world to be able to tell people that Jesus Christ loves you as you are. And no matter what you're going through, he can change your life. Now, this was in Flagstaff? That you Flagstaff, came Arizona. Yeah, yeah I, I lived in Arizona quite a while, and my son got uh, two degrees from Flagstaff. It's a beautiful place. It is. And it's uh, not a bad place to hide. Yeah, and that's, and that's why I went there. <laughs> yeah. that's, that's why I went there. You know, yeah. I found out that there were, there were federal warrants out for my arrest. And uh, I always tell people, you know, they, they arrested 49 guys in one night in a big raid in the college area that I was in. And I found out they missed two of us, and I was number two on the list. And so I felt led of the Lord to leave town. Mm -hmm. And so uh, <laughs> went to, uh, to hide, went to hide, you know, uh, uh, of all the scriptures besides John 3, 16, Rome, Romans 8, 28 is my favorite scripture. All things work together for good. Mm -hmm. And so here I was running from the law, but I was actually running to the Lord. You know, I, I, and, and I know we wanted to talk about the book, but... When I was living in Columbia, had a ranch down there, I overdosed, and I knew I was dying. Knew nothing about Jesus, knew nothing about God, didn't know if there was a God. And, and Dale, to be honest, if there was a God, would he have anything to do with somebody like yeah, me? Yeah, you would think automatically no. No, yeah. because, because yeah. you're not good enough. See, that's the wonderful thing, and that's one of the reasons I, I teach the Bible through the, through the Hebrew understanding of Jesus, mm -hmm. is God is a God of love. He's not a God of condemnation. He's not a God of punishment. Matter of fact, the Bible says the eyes of the Lord are running to and fro looking for somebody mm -hmm. he can be strong in their behalf and here I was down in Columbia South America smuggling drugs mm -hmm. doing every bad thing that you can do full of uh, not only addiction but my greatest problem was I was a very violent person a very angry person and I'm overdosing I know I'm dying mm -hmm. but I cried out and said God don't let me die you know and I tell people you know why People say, I don't believe in God, or, mm -hmm. or there is no God, or I'm, I'm an atheist, or whatever they say. The moment they get hit with something they beyond their control, 
with them or a child gets sick, immediately we go, God help me. And the reason they know is, somehow, th don't they? Th th God put yeah. that in us. Mm -hmm. God put that in us that when we finally get to the end of our personal rope, there's something in us that goes beyond man's reasoning, and we cry out to God. And the reason is, He loves us. He's, mm -hmm. he, you know, one of the greatest teachings we can give people is they, they came to Jesus and they said, Lord, teach us. Now, these are Jewish people who mm -hmm. prayed two or three times a day. But they said to Jesus, teach us how to pray. Mm -hmm. Here's one of the great things about understanding the Bible through the Hebrew mindset. Mm -hmm. Teach us how to pray. And Jesus said, when you pray, say, our Father. Not our God. Not the king of the universe, but say, Father. Because it's in him. It is the Father's good pleasure. Mm -hmm. You think about you think about my life. I mean, why would God want somebody like me? What is the end of the story? Before we get to the speaking about the Torah, what yeah. happened to you? Obviously, you're not in prison because here you are. Obviously, I'm not in prison. Mm -hmm. I'm not. A, I'm not an addict anymore. I'm, uh, you know, you know. That's what the first book I wrote was on breaking generational curses, that, breaking yeah. family mm -hmm. curses, called Free at Last, and. Uh, uh, I, I discovered as a Christian not, not only to get saved. There's a lot of people, Dale, that are saved, but a lot of people still have tremendous problems. And so I wrote the book on breaking generational curses. Everywhere I go, people want me to teach on, tell us how to break the generational curse. Well, I learned how to break that curse by studying the Bible through the Hebrew understanding. The Jewish people could always come to the temple have a lamb that's sacrificed and have their sins forgiven. Sure. Okay, but, and we're getting ready to come up on this mm -hmm. time on the calendar. In, in the year 09, this is called the Yom Kippur. And, but what, what we as Christians didn't understand is when they came for that forgiveness, they didn't bring one sacrifice, they brought two. One that would come into the altar, the blood would wash the sins away. The second, they would have at the door which, mm -hmm. of the temple, which is our heart, and they would confess the iniquities are the curses, and they would send that goat into the desert. If that goat died, and, and, and then they would dip their blood, and this is coming mm -hmm. up just mm -hmm. in a few weeks, mm -hmm. they would, th this, this sacrifice washed the sins away. Then the high priest would dip his finger in the blood, He'd go into the Holy of Holies, and he'd sprinkle the blood in the Holy of Holies seven times. If you were to say to most Christians, mm -hmm. tell me, we're, tell me, finish this verse for me. We're redeemed by the blood. Of by the blood. Mm -hmm. okay? And then I would say, how many places did Jesus shed his blood? Or where did Jesus shed his blood? And they would say, say, on the cross. On the cross. Mm -hmm. But Jesus shed his blood seven times in the garden, at the whipping post, crown of thorns, in his hands, in his feet, in his side, mm -hmm. went through the gates of hell, stomped on the devil's forehead, bruised his heel, wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquity. Seven times did mm -hmm. Jesus shed his blood. Why? To reconnect all of us whose sins are forgiven, reconnect us to the promises of Abraham. But God says, my people destroyed for their lack of knowledge. Mm -hmm. So watch this. And this, you know, in Hebrew, there's no word for coincidence. Mm -hmm. So if people are watching your program right yeah. now, it's not a coincidence. Mm -hmm. God not only wants to forgive the sin, but break every curse and release in these end times mm -hmm. the blessings that's been paid for in full by the blood of Jesus. Mm -hmm. So on, on the day of Yom Kippur, which is coming up in a couple weeks, few weeks, mm -hmm. they would bring one sacrifice in, this sacrifice would die, and that blood would atone for their sins. Mm. Then the, the high priest, original Aaron, would dip his finger, go behind the Holy Holies, and sprinkle the blood of that sacrifice mm -hmm. seven times. And it released health and prosperity and victory and rain and joy and peace. Then he'd come back out, put his hands in the blood of that sacrifice, go to the door of the temple, and confess the curses. Okay, mm -hmm. the sin opened the door for curses to come on the people. Now the sin's forgiven, the blessing has been paid for, now he would go to the door and confess the curses. Mm -hmm. There's poverty in my family, there's addiction in my family, there's sickness in my family. And the Bible said we'd send that goat out to a desert place. 
Remember when Jesus said, you cast a demon out, oh, sure. and it goes to a dry place, mm -hmm. but comes back and finds the door still open, and it goes and gets how many spirits? Seven. Seven. Mm -hmm. This is the Hebrew understanding of the Bible. So you'd cast that demon out, and then, if it came back in, the sins were still forgiven. But the blessings were blocked because the curse would block the blessing. Mm -hmm. When Jesus came, he said to Peter, who do men say that I am? Mm -hmm. And Peter gave a Hebrew answer. Mm -hmm. He said, you're the, Christ. you're the Christ. In Christ, that means you're the one that not only would mm -hmm. remove the burden, the wages of our sin, but you would break the curse. And so when Christians begin to understand that not only does God want to forgive us, he wants to break every curse, every spirit that's blocking the blessing and release what Jesus paid for in that holy of holies mm -hmm. by the seven places he shed his blood. And the only way we can understand it is by understanding the truth, because the truth we know will set us free.